Hey guys, this is Landon Blake with Redefine Horizons. This is another Field Survey Friday video. It's a video I'm doing for Tommy, one of our subscribers on our YouTube Learning Channel. He asked me to talk about what is field to finish. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Appreciate the feedback, Tommy. Always like it when I hear from my subscribers. Uh, I've got some other videos that have been requested. Uh, so I got two or three. Uh, they're in the hopper. I got a video I need to do for Caesar, and uh, there's one other, I think one or two other videos that, that people have asked for. So uh, I will get to those eventually. Be patient with me, please. Okay, but this video is for Tommy. He wants to know about uh, field to finish. What is field to finish in land surveying? Um, I may end up doing this as more than one video on this, so I'm going to call this part one. And, you know, field to finish is something that that's pretty software specific, you know, that the actual implementation is going to be highly dependent on your software. But... I did feel like there were some general kind of concepts that we could talk about. It doesn't matter what software you're using. Some of the basic concepts or principles are the same. You can do field to finish in Carlson Survey. You can do it in AutoCAD Civil 3D. You can do it in Trimble Business Center. Um, so there's different types of software that you can use to implement field to finish. Um, it's definitely a good idea. Um, the more uh, construction surveying and topographic surveying you do with traditional methods, the more important field to finish is. Um, we, we have elements of a field to finish system here at RH, um, we could do better. We could do better about, uh, how we actually execute the system that's been designed here. Part of the reason for that is we don't do a ton of, um, a traditional topographic surveying like the, like the traditional surveying shop does. We, we, we tend to do more, uh, boundary surveying and if we're collecting topographic data, it's usually... Um, with uh, LIDAR or with the UAB, uh, but we do have the system here and it is important. Um, and even if, even if you're in a system where you're doing what I call feature extraction off of something like a LIDAR point cloud, uh, elements of the field to finish system come into play. So, so it is important to know about it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you a definition here for field to finish to start. And then we're going to just kind of break this definition down and look at the different pieces. So a uh, field to finish is the system used to efficiently produce finished survey deliverables from data collected during a field survey. Okay, so let's break that down. I said field to finish is the system. Okay, what do I mean by system? So a system, it has some different parts. Okay, there's standards. Okay, so for example, a point naming convention is an important part of a field to finish system. Okay, a point naming convention. So for example, at my shop, we name control points zero to 99 okay aerial targets are 300 to 399 uh, conventional total station points are 10,000 to uh, you know 19,999 so we assign point ranges okay so that's an example so standards are part of the system software templates are part of the system so if you're in software like AutoCAD Civil 3D you have your description keys uh, you have your line work codes, so there's different templates that you have to implement in your software. That's another part of the system. And then finally, uh, the, there's actual software automation that happens. Okay, so for an example is automated line work. That's where you use line work codes to draw your to draw your line work. Okay, so again, field to finish is a system. Okay, so it's a system, and there's three parts, primary parts to the system, right? So there's standards. Okay, standards like point naming conventions or feature codes or description keys okay there's software templates so those are those are parts of the field to finish system that you set up in your software and then there's the actual software automation that happens okay in your software Okay, so if we go back to that next part of the definition, so field to finish is the system used to efficiently produce finished survey deliverables. So what do I mean by efficiently? Well, we're trying to reduce manual labor. So for example, um, if, you're, if you've got a topo survey, you import your point file for your topo survey, and then you go in and you hand layer your points. You put all the dirt shots on the dirt layer, you put all the curb shots on the curb layers, put all the building shots on the building layer. If you're doing that by hand, that is extremely inefficient you need field to finish. Okay, so efficiency, we're reducing manual labor and we're avoiding other kinds of, of waste, right? So for example, if you're in a drawing 
and you're trying to find all your survey control points. And so you're going, you know, you're going to, you got to pan through the drawing and try and figure, you know, look at the field notes, figure out where the control is. If you're using field to finish properly, though, you know, those control points will automatically get the right kind of symbol and you can automatically plot their coordinates in a control table. Um, so efficiently, you know, just we're, we're saving a lot of time. We're replacing manual labor with, with computer labor, right? All right, so to efficiently produce survey deliverables, what do I mean by survey deliverables? Usually when we're talking about field to finish, we're talking about topographic maps, but it could be other kinds of uh, deliverables. It could be exhibits, reports, point files, right? So uh, if, you, if you have your field to finish set up, field to finish system set up properly, it's pretty easy to say ex export um, all the found monuments in a point file out of a, out of a CAD drawing or to create a, a survey control exhibit with a, with a control table and, and the right kind of control point symbols, right? So it's not just topo deliverables, there are other kinds of deliverables too, but it's primarily topo, topo maps is what it's made for. All right, so then uh, the last part of the definition is from data collected during a field survey. So what does that mean? I'm primarily talking about points, right? So a lot of field to finish is based on how you number and then describe the points that you collect in the field, right? So um, it, it's having point number ranges and it's about using the right kind of codes in your point description. You could call them feature codes or description keys depending on what kind of software you're using. Okay, so for example, you might use um, at my office, uh, everything that we shoot that's related to water utilities gets a WTR on the first part of the description, water. Okay, so we use three or four character codes to describe the primary type of feature. Then we have like a secondary code. Is it a valve? Is it a meter box? Is it a fire hydrant? Okay, and then you may have some other type of coding that you use. So for example, you might use um, uh, a Y or an N, letter Y or letter N, to indicate whether or not the point should go on the surface. Okay, or uh, one place I worked, it was uh, GFG, good for grade. Okay, meant that it could go on the surface. Okay, so you come up with your codes. Those are embedded in your point description. Okay, but it's, it's possible that we're talking about other data collected during field survey. For example, you may have a, a, a GIS system where you automatically link up photographs you take in the field with a, with a pointer line feature in your GIS. So it's not just surveying, you can do it in GIS too. All right, so what are the parts, the different parts of a traditional uh, field to finish system? We're talking about surveying here, not as much GIS, but so if you're a surveyor and you're setting up a field to finish system, what are the different parts? Okay, so the first part we talked about a little bit, it's point number ranges. Okay, so you're gonna have standard point number ranges. Okay, and that, that may be something that I do a separate video on, separate video on point number ranges, how to design a good set of point number ranges. You have your feature codes, okay, they're called description keys in AutoCAD, Civil 3D, Trimble calls them feature codes. Okay, that's just a, a code to identify the primary type of feature in the description. Okay, you have line work codes, those are codes you collect in your point description that control how lines are drawn connecting your points. So for example, edge of pavement or top of curb, okay? I might be able to cover feature codes and line work codes in the same video. We'll do some follow-up on that. And then any other data that you want to embed in your point description. Okay, so like I mentioned, whether or not the point gets included in the surface or uh, maybe the data was collected or maybe it's whether or not it's a utility a point or not. Okay, so any other data that's relevant to your organization that you can embed in the point description. Okay, so those are the parts of a traditional field to finish system. Then what are some of the things that the software can do? Once you have this set up, what are some of the things the software can do? I'm going to go ahead and write right over here. What can your software do once you have these things set up? Okay, so one thing it can do is it can do um, point layering, automatic point layering, which is really important. Okay, in your CAD system, you can automatically layer your points. Okay, you can do automatic block placement, rotation, and scaling. Okay, which is really, uh, really cool. All right, you don't want your drafters having to hand place blocks as a general rule. OK, 
Okay, you can do uh, automatic line work. So you can draw your lines. You don't have to do dot to dot with your points. Okay. Um, you can do um, automatic surf surfacing and contours. They're pretty easy to set that up. You import your topo points and your surface automatically gets built from the right points. Okay, you got to be careful there that you got the right break lines in your surface, but even that can be automated to a large extent. Okay, and then some other cool stuff. Uh, you can do, you can automatically create your sheet layouts and viewports if you have your CAD set up right. Uh, you can do point tables. Okay, I've got a, actually got a video that shows you how to do point tables in Carlson Survey. We'll try and link to that in the description. So point tables are point tables are pretty handling, and then we have other kinds of auto labeling features which GIS is really good at, and CAD isn't quite as evolved, but. And you could go in and, for example, lab, label, create standard labels on your curbs. You know, with your, uh, your lip of gutter, your flow line, your top of curb, your back of walk. You can have that auto label. Usually that requires, in most CAD software, that requires you have run some custom code. But you can enable that kind of thing if your field to finish system is set up properly. Okay, so you can do a lot, right? You can do a lot of stuff with your uh, field to finish. So you can do, you know, I don't know, I would say probably 70 to 80% of a good topographic survey can be automated if you have your field to finish system set up. Even if you don't use field to finish to do things like auto place blocks and auto run line work, you should still, just as good survey practice, have standard point number ranges and feature codes, uh, do stuff like that. So that was a gentle, a gentle introduction to field to finish for Tommy. Um, there, I, I don't know that I'm going to do a bunch of software specific videos that teach you how to do this. Carlson, I know, has some videos in their academy that show you how to do it. I'm sure there's some videos on YouTube that show you how to set up Field to Finish and Trimble Business Center. Um, but I, I probably will do some, I'll do a video that talks about how to set up point number ranges and how to set up feature codes and line work codes. And we'll use some, I'll give you an example of, of some other data that you could perhaps code in your, uh, in your description. So I will do some, some more videos that talk a little bit about how you actually set up your field to finish system. Tommy, I hope that video helped. I hope it was a good introduction. I will get these other field to finish videos on my list here. We'll get those in the hopper. I'll try and get them done in the next few weeks. For the rest of you, I appreciate you tuning in to Field Survey Friday, and hopefully we'll catch you on our next video.